The movie The Matrix follows a dystopian future where the character Neo lives in a simulated universe called The Matrix. The movie is famous for its philosophical ideas around simulation and references different writers from whom these ideas originate. But featured most prominently is the work of Baudrillard, Simulacra and Simulation, which was written in 1981, 18 years prior to the film. But 20 years later, simulation is as popular as ever to discuss. This is most likely due to us being surrounded by simulation in our everyday past lives. Are we living in a simulation? Tell me right now, please. Tell us on the record. I hate to break it to you. Neil deGrasse Tyson can blow the most feeble minds that we might in fact be living in a simulation quite easily. To reiterate the point of Tyson here, since computers can already generate simulated worlds in video games, and seeing how vastly computers have improved just over the span of a decade, comparing that to our time as a species, it doesn't seem all that crazy anymore to propose the idea that we eventually could actually simulate a universe. So while putting the perspective of time around this, what's to say we aren't already being simulated? The odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Many different philosophers have pondered over the idea of simulation for a long time, but the most famous example is Plato's allegory of the cave. The Matrix takes its idea from this concept almost entirely. It goes as follows. Imagine prisoners being chained inside a cave ever since birth. They are completely immobilized and can only perceive the wall in front of them. On this wall, shadows are being cast originating from a roadway behind the prisoners. Due to the echo from the wall, the prisoners are under the assumption that the sounds are coming from the shadows. This simulation of shadows cast on the wall is the prisoners' perception of reality since it's all they can perceive. One prisoner, however, eventually escapes his chains and his perception of reality then gets distorted. Just like Neo escaping his reality of the simulation he finds himself in. Neo can't tell that he's living in the Matrix, not until at least he famously takes the red pill. In the context of the film and Neo's consciousness, the Matrix is a hyper-reality, which per definition is the unconscious inability to distinguish reality for a simulation of reality. The old world is in ruins and forgotten while Neo lives on in the simulacrum. This idea of a simulated universe becoming reality is in simulacrum simulation explained by Baudrillard through an older work of fiction, a fable by Georges Louis Borges. Borg's fable told of an empire whose cartographers had mastered the map of its land, so much so that the map covered the size of the empire and coincided with it perfectly. In the story, the preceding generations didn't see the value in the study of cartography, nor longer the maps themselves. As the empire crumbled with time, so did the maps. But in the west of the empire, where the deserts could still be perceived, inhabited by beggars and animals, the map of the deserts gets confused for the original and takes form of simulacra. Baudrillard points out that it's the map that precedes the territory, and while being a model of a real, it is no longer an origin or reality. If you want to be nitpicky, Morpheus should have said this while in the Matrix, but not the depiction of reality in the Ma You know what? No one cares. According to Baudrillard, we already live in a hyper-reality, which again is our unconscious inability to distinguish reality for a simulation of reality. So while simulation or simulacrum is most commonly associated with technology, simulation can also take place within a space beyond our physical limits. Something like this already exists for us. Money. Baudrillard describes simulacra as something of a copy with no original. Money's value used to be bound by gold, the gold standard until 1970, but when this was removed, money functioned as its own reality since it's a copy with no original thus a simulacrum. It's controlled by our laws, but more importantly, our belief. Money exists because we believe in it. In fact, looking at a simulation with this lens of Baudrillard, we see us surrounded by hyperreality. Hyperreality can also be a person taking someone's version of reality and making it their own. 
YouTube, for example, is often perceived as an authentic platform of creators. What they share is a reflection of their reality. But more often than not, this later comes out to be false. If an audience perceives our reflection of reality as authentic and then appropriates it to their own life, then their reality then becomes hyper-real. So just like Neo's reality is hyper-real through the Matrix, our reality is hyper-real through ourselves. So maybe the question shouldn't be, are we living in reality? Rather, what can we do to protect our reality, even if it's likely to be unreal? What is real? How do you define real? 